I'm here with Samuel Bouchard, uh, CEO and co-founder of Robotique, and the man who literally wrote the book on Lean Robotics. Uh, Samuel, uh, what can you tell me about uh, the Rock Challenge? Yeah, so the Rock Challenge, what we want to do is really make the Lean Robotics methodology alive. And uh, what we realized in the last nine years helping thousands of uh, manufacturers deploying uh, robots is the big challenge is not the gripper, it's not the camera, it's not the sensor, it's not even the robot. The challenge is really putting all of this together. So coming up with a good design in time and then putting all this stuff together. So really the integrate phase. So what we've done is uh, we wrote the book. I wrote the book uh, Lean Robotics where we took that big problem and split it in, into uh, steps, clear steps. Uh, and now what we're doing today is really using this, this approach to, uh, to do a project. So each team, uh, there are about uh, 12 people, five robots. So it's really a teamwork. So it's as much uh, engineering as it is uh, project management and really, uh, and really leading teams in deploying robots. It's a, a fairly diverse uh, group that you assembled. Here. Yeah, indeed. We have uh, people from uh, many countries. We have 22 different countries. And uh, we have uh, partners, so distributors of uh, Robotique. And we have also all sorts of end users in all sorts of industries. People making uh, satellites, people making uh, shells, people making locks, uh, people making automotive parts, so all sorts of customers, uh, but working on, the, on a common challenge. And um, what, are you, what are you sort of hoping to, to see here? Are you, are you uh, expecting to, to get a lot of different strategies in terms of, of the best way to make these parts? Or? Yeah, so what we're seeing is that uh, every team will have a, a different approach technically. But every team, every team is going to be applying the same process. So starting by mapping the manual process, then coming up with the concepts, then validating a few of the risks of their project, then freezing a design, and then moving on to the integrate phase. So, uh, from uh, pure robotics, so how, what the robots will do, each robot will do something different in each of the team, but each team is using the same standard methodology, and that's what we want to show here. That even if all factories are different, there there is a way to uh, do it step by step and to do it faster and to get your production, your robot to production faster. So you have this new uh, book, it's uh, Lean Robotics, uh, a guide to making your robots work in your factory. Um, and I've noticed I've, I've uh, started reading it, and I haven't finished it yet. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one of the, the things you point out are uh, reasons that people have uh, difficulty integrating robots into their, their factory, right? And you say uh, cost is an obvious uh, case, but also um, I thought it was interesting you brought up uh, the history behind the, the deployment of, of robots initially, right? It started as an automotive yeah. application, and that's, that's posed a problem for, for manufacturers today. So that right? Yeah, so if you look at the history of robots, it really started all in the automotive, and, and not only in the automotive, but more specifically in the body and white area, so welding the car bodies. And even today, if you go on the assembly line, of automotive, it, there's a lot of manual work and there are not a lot of robots. So these robots really evolve to solve the need of their customers. But today, many people need robots, not only automotive. So there are plenty of companies that cannot find enough worker to do the manual job. And their constraints are much different than the automotive body and white. So uh, they, their production change all the time, they produce new product all the time. So in this case, it's not about squeezing the last fraction of a second of the cycle time. What the biggest variable in the, in the return on investment is really how much time it's going to take to deploy the robots and how much time it's going to take when you need to do changeovers, when you need to adapt uh, your uh, robotic cell to the new reality because your production floor is really it's a living thing. Any, any factory today, uh, there are plenty of automation of manufacturing engineers working there day in, day out doing continuous improvement. So uh, we're a manufacturer, we, we make our own products and we have a whole team always looking at introducing new products, improving how we manufacture things. And what you don't want is you don't want to have that big monument of a robotic cell in the middle of your factory floor and then you need to introduce a new product or increase capacity or decrease it or do changes and have that big thing that you cannot, that's kind of there and that's constraining you to make your factory floor evolve. So even before going and, and doing mass customization, even just today with the, the product mix and the reality of today, uh, people need flexibility and, and ease of use. Sure, yeah. Um, and I noticed in the book you make a distinction between uh, robotic integration and robotic cell uh, deployment, right? Yeah. Can you explain a little bit? Yeah, so I wanted to, uh, to make a distinction. So. The, the robotic cell deployment is really the design, integrate, and operate phase. And we include the operate phase, and, and that's really on purpose because the, the, whole, the goal of the whole exercise is to have a, a working productive robot on your factory floor. So in typical system integration, you do the design and the integrate, and then you pass it on to the manufacturer who does the operate phase. But we say it should be a continuum, and, uh, and more and more we're seeing the trend also that the end users, the manufacturers, they take control of their projects. So they should be looking at, at uh, this whole process in a holistic way. Samuel Bouchard with uh, Lean Robotics and Ruck 2017.